Hello sweet sweet souls, welcome back. I hope that you've had a good few days. So this week what we're going to do is what would they like to say to you and we are using two romantic tarot decks to do that. So this one is uh, the Baba Studios deck, the Victorian Romance Tarot. I just absolutely love the box um, as well. So it's, um, it's a very close deck to my heart. And then this one is the Romance Tarot, which I've had for years. So we're going to use these two decks. Go to the deck that you are most drawn to not the box, the deck, number one, number two. Okay, and what we're going to do is we'll work on the mutual energy between you and everyone watching and your people, and we're going to just ask what they would like to communicate with you if they had the chance. So think about your person for me, and we're just getting into the collective energy of everyone watching. So if you do need me, drop me a message at mysticlovetarot at gmail.com, or the info is on the website at mysticlovetarot.com. Okay, let's go. So what would your person, the person you are thinking of, like to say to you right now if they had the chance? And we're really kind of stepping into that present energy, which I quite like. Um, a lot of the time when we do tarot, we tend to look at the future, we look at the past. And the present we, we look at, but it's where you currently are. So when we are looking at what your person would like to say to you, this is right here, right now, as I pull your cards. Um, so it's quite, a, it's a very present, present reading, which I do enjoy. Okay, so I'm literally going to stop at four cards. I'm not going to do any more than that. But let's look at the bottom of the deck as well. Ace of Wands at the bottom. So those of you that read tarot, you've got the King of Cups. You've got the Seven of Swords. You've got the Queen of Wands. And we have the Six of Wands at the bottom of these four. And at the bottom of the deck is the Ace of of ones as well so where are we going with this well let's start off with the king and the queen and in the middle is the seven of swords so one side of this is your energy you um are in the queen of ones energy your person on the other side opposite side is the king of cups and in the middle we have the seven of swords now the seven of swords normally speaks of deception or things that are going on behind the scene that perhaps you aren't aware of and what I like about it coming up between you both it is really showing at the moment that, that perhaps there isn't a communication going on between you guys neither of you particularly know where the other person is standing I also feel that your person has got a bit of a brick wall down in front of them perhaps they've had a mask on and you haven't been able to see the real them they've been kind of not acknowledging their emotions they've been not acknowledging their feelings We've got a sexual energy with the Queen of Wands. We have an emotional energy with the Queen of Cups and it's, uh, sorry, the King of Cups. But your energies just can't quite aligning at this moment in time. And this is where the Seven of Swords is coming in the middle. So when we look at him, he's looking towards stuff that's happened in the past. And he's thinking, well, perhaps I could have handled situations better. Perhaps I haven't expressed how I should have been feeling. Um, and the reason why is because I didn't want to feel vulnerable. OK, so that is what your first, the, the, your person would say to you first and foremost, is if they haven't expressed to you how they're feeling, it's because they don't want to appear vulnerable. They also would say to you that perhaps they've come forward on a more sexual perspective, uh, sexual point of view rather than an emotional point of view. And again, it comes back to that vulnerability, your person not wanting to be vulnerable around you. They enjoy the good times. OK, so they like it when it's happy, but when it becomes a bit heavy or the energy becomes a bit sad, it's like they withdraw from the situation. And again, with the Seven of Swords, it's this kind of mask wearing. They haven't been honest with you about their emotions. They haven't been honest with you about their feelings. Um, and again, it keeps coming back to that state of I'm not going to express how I'm feeling because I appear vulnerable. Now, your person, with them being in the King of Cups energy, they know that you have feelings for them. They know that you have these emotions for them. Um, and so sometimes they can feel that they are playing with emotions here. OK, so they know that you have these feelings and they know that you have these emotions, but they haven't done anything on it because if they do something on it. They realise that they have to really come to terms with their feelings on the situation and that blocks it a little bit. So they'd say that to you as well. It's not that they don't like you. They do like you, but they are kind of debating whether to take the risks and take the chances with this connection because of fear of being vulnerable. So that is what they would say to you. 
it's like two like i said two opposite ends of the spectrum you're not meeting in the middle now what i do like about these cards is they're mainly ones you have one sword one cups and the other three are ones so this is a passionate energy this is a connection this has got lots of chemistry there is a definitely a sexual vibe happening between the two of you um and there is chances for this to move forward with the ace of wands and the six of wands kind of coming through at the bottom end of the deck you have this passionate new beginning and you have victory from the situation so it's like if they have the right amount of time this risk taking where they're scared of getting their heart hurt when they they come to terms with that and realize it's okay to be vulnerable that is when they will give you everything they want they can uh, everything you want sorry they can see a future with you, they can see it working out, um, and there is definitely a transformation happening within this. Now, I looked at that and wondered if it was a phoenix, but it's not, it's an angel coming down, but it's almost as if the phoenix vibe is still there. This situation is rising from the ashes, okay? So if it has gone a little bit peak tongue and it's gone a bit quiet, it will come around again um, with the song, a song coming in there. Uh, I actually got two songs. I got that coming around again, and I can't remember who sings it. It's quite old. And then I got Tracy Chapman, Fast Car, which is actually one of my favourite songs, um, that coming through as well. So the situation between you guys, what they would say to you is they have got feelings for you. They have got emotions for you. Sometimes perhaps they act more on the sexual side of things, but that's because they get scared when their heart is on the line. They can see a future with you. They'll realise that it's worth the risk, um, but it's kind of like you've got to go at their speed. If you go at their speed, the mask that they're wearing will drop. Anywhere that you're feeling that they're not letting you in their heart and perhaps they have deceived you, that will be released and you can really move forward to your victory and to your passionate new beginnings. So your energies just need to align really. And that's why I like the setup of those cards. Because even though the Seven of Swords, people would say, oh God, negative card. It's coming between you both. So it's just a mixed match of energy. You know, it's just your energy and their energy not aligning at this moment in time. But it will do. Let's ask how this energy will align. Is there anything that will change this situation to let the energy align? Three of Swords. Okay, so for the energy to align between the two of you, it's almost like um, you never know what you've got until it's gone. So if they have vanished into the sunset and you guys are not talking and not in communication and there is this heaviness on your heart, this will then echo onto your person. So it's through this heartache and pain that this situation can move forward. Okay, so I know it's kind of a bit of a double edged sword really here that there is this pain that you guys are going through and a mixed match of your energy. But it is through that heartache and pain that they will realise that you are who they want. And that is when they will reach out to you and communicate with you their feelings. And it does feel that there will be a communication of their feelings. I also feel that they, like I said, with this kind of mask that they're wearing, they have pushed you away a little bit. And this will also be the three of swords energy. So sometimes it can be complete and utter heartbreak and devastation. Other times it it can be just you know a little bit of an ouchie so it's through these ouchies that this situation can move forward so a bit tough bit of a tough pill to swallow but once it's happened that progression route will come back round again and again getting the song coming around again and fast car both of them and um, your person has to miss you to realize that they want to be with you and let that vulnerability drop that is deck number one. Okay, so if you need me, drop me a message, mrstillofetarot at gmail.com. Let's do deck number two. So if you just tapped in, tuned in, turned on, what we're doing today is what would your person like to say to you? We're working very much with the current energy rather than the future energy or a past energy. But if spirits guide us in the direction that we need to step into the future energy, we will do that. So what would your person like to say to you? Let's see what comes up. What would your person like to say to you? Two. Three. Four. I'm going to stop at five. The car's got a different idea. Okay, I'm going to stop at four and I'm going to do... No, I'm going to stop at four. Yeah, no, it's hard stepping. Okay, I'm stopping at four because the cards have got a different idea. And I'm going to go to the bottom of the deck, which is what I did on deck number one. Okay, so what would your lot person like to say to you? So let's start off over here at the bottom of the deck. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo vibes coming through over here? 
there is a love connection between you guys. Uh, there is very, very strong emotions over here. There is um, a beautiful romantic connection between you both. But there is also a transformation happening. So perhaps the situation hasn't been going how you wanted it to. Perhaps it's just not quite worked and you kind of said goodbye at this moment in time. Um, but the reason why that's happening is for a situation to transform around you. There's an ending and there is a new beginning. And it's almost like you couldn't start the next chapter with this person if you kept repeating the past. So the past has had to be put to bed. And this is what your person would say to you. They're saying they are grieving you. They are missing you if you're not in contact. They have these very strong emotions for you. They have these very, very strong feelings for you. And they are burdened by the situation. They're feeling a great sense of loss. And with the burden over here, it's like, they're trying to move forward, but they've got the weight of the world on their shoulders. They've got you on their back. They can't actually step away from the situation as much as they thought they would be able to. There is a stagnation around you guys that you might feel like not much is happening. But I do see progression routes going forward here. And especially with the Ten of Cups over at the bottom of the deck, Romeo, Romeo. You've got an ending and you've got a new beginning. That's really, really clear. Major arcanas on this, we've got the deaf card and the hanged man. So it's major issues that are going on within the situation. They haven't got over this. They are very, very strong feelings for you. And they are just working through their head what they want to do about it all. If you're not in communication, communication is going to come back in. If you are waiting for them to make the moves of saying that you're the love of the life, we're going to be together. That can happen, but it's like it has to transform around you both first. The situation hasn't been working out how you wanted it to. There's been a bit of a uh, spirit saying double-edged sword. Um, it's been a bit icky. Icky, sticky. And not much has really happened between you guys in recent times. And so you didn't really know what to do about it. Now, what I find quite interesting here is it seems that one of you will be making a move. One of you is going to be given quite a steady direction and perhaps reach out out of the blue and test and say, Hey, how's it going? Not spoke to you for a while. Or your person will do that as well if you're not in contact. One of you guys is going to make the move forward with this. And when that move is made forward, the stagnation around you fades and you move yourselves together. And this is where you've got the balcony and you've got him serenading her. So there is going to be an open communication about feelings. There is going to be a talking about emotions there is going to be vulnerability is fine within this connection there is a case of feeling vulnerable there's also a little bit of uh, tension when you might feel like your heart is racing a little bit as they talk to you about their emotions they can see things sometimes from a completely different perspective of how you have and um, but the main thing here is what they would say to you is that loss is really giving them that sense of grief and that sense of grief is really pushing them towards their emotions for you. They have realised how they are feeling. They are having epiphanies. They are having moments of light. They are realising how much you mean to them in these quiet times and the situation is definitely transforming and this is where their serenading comes in this is where they will talk to you about their feelings. This is when they will express their emotions and they aren't scared to do it anymore. Before they were scared, um, they were frightened of what would happen um, if they displayed, you know, that kind of sense of I'm, I'm feeling a little bit emotional. I'm not really sure how to express these feelings for you. It made them feel like they couldn't do it. But this transformation that's happening through this loss is where this growth can happen. So what they would say to you is all of that summarised, that they're having epiphanies, they're having wake-up calls, that they're missing you if you're not in contact, that the relationship is transforming, that they are ready to make the moves towards you, that they can't stop thinking about you and that they will come towards you and they are going to express their emotions for you. And it will come through the sense of loss. Can you tell me anything else of that, what, will, what will change this transformation? What will happen? Let's just see if anything else comes up. So you've got seven of cups and you've got the three of ones. So by having these thoughts, by having this sense of confusion over it all, they're gaining clarity and that clarity creates the action. So again, in these moments of being standstill, they're having the epiphanies, which is bringing them towards you and creating that action. So 
that's what's going to happen. So it's pretty cool, deck number two. I do like it. Um, even though you might feel heavy at the moment, um, there is this very much sense of we can work together and we can work this as a team and we can make this relationship work. Emotions will be stabilising, I hear, as well. And that is deck number two. So if you need me, drop me a message. Mystitlovetarot at gmail.com. I love you all to pieces and I'll speak to you soon. Ciao, Bellas.